And my second guest is Tal Brook, a man who experienced uh, these altered states of consciousness under Sai Baba, a guru in India that attracted many, many thousands of people to him. Uh, what I'd like to come to tonight is in Ekankar, Darwin, the actual levels of initiation that a student goes through. And uh, what uh, apparently uh, Paul Twitchell said about these, I'm going to quote him uh, hopefully exactly here. In the first initiation, he said that uh, to start things out, a person comes in during the dream state and it involves contact with what he calls the higher ones. I find that interesting because um, in, uh, we have Jose Silva from Silva Mind Control, third day of their course, he teaches them how to invite two spirit guides to come into their minds to stay with the person forever. But apparently in Ekankar, the dream state, contacting the higher ones, stage one. Stage two, or the second circle as it's called here, uh, the cella, or the student, the disciple, must decide to take either the path of what he calls black magic, white magic, or the center path of Ekankar. Third circle, the initiate, the initiate then learns to look at his past lives in order to live in the present. He's got to get the whole scope, apparently, to check out his karma. Negative. Huh? Not, not necessary. But he's, he's got to at least examine it according to what... Uh, if he we, chooses to, yes. Okay. Then the fourth circle, fourth stage, here one understands that the mind is the enemy that must be overcome. Thought and intelligent only lead to unhappiness, according to Twitchell. That's a direct quote. The fifth circle... The cella, the student, travels above the psychic worlds into the fir tr first true spiritual world. Uh, and here the balance of the ordinary state of mind is, is, quote, swept away, and a new balance is achieved. And what this is, the traveler, the student, may expect, quote, a tax upon himself. And uh, Twitchell describes here what seems to be a rather severe psychic disorientation that sets in during this time. Apparently the cella is undergoing severe testing of his ability to dispense with the normal functions of the mind. Twitchell says illumination occurs, quote, when the mind has finally come under control. And it's at that point that the student begins to use and control all the psychic faculties within himself. Um, Including the mind. That's right. And uh, he is now ruled by soul and can view all life from this lofty position. This is the new consciousness for the old. This initiation develops new ways for breaking up concept uh, conceptual thought patterns, etc. And then the sixth circle, he says that uh, this initi initiation comes complete, with this initiation comes complete sacrifice and uttermost suffering. The initiate must lose everything in life that means any to, anything to him and sacrifice himself even unto death. Twitchell says, if the acolyte, the initiate of the fifth circle, knew what lay ahead for him, he might leave the path of Ek at this point. Uh, but uh, at this point, the cella, the student, has become 100% uh, subservient to the living Ek master. The seventh circle, he exists in a world of silence. He must choose to stop or at this point to take the next five initiations, at which point he will belong to the brotherhood of the ancient order of the Viraji. And at this level it is learned that no initiation is of any value unless it is the Ek initiation. Now, um, the, these, are, these are some steps that are, uh, are pretty serious steps. How yeah. many of those steps have you gone through? All are, you of those. The, are you in the ninth, eleventh? Ninth. The ninth. Uh, I, to, to go beyond that, I'd have to leave Earth or drop the physical body. This, to be servient, let me clarify the air a little bit. Well, let, let me read those to you because I didn't realize you went that far. The eighth circle, according to Twitchell, brings one to the crossroads of eternity where he has the choice of whether he will remain upon the Earth to help the progress of humanity or pass onward to the realm of spiritual development outside this planet, which means... Moving on. Right. Death, right? Correct. This level also teaches um, uh, there are many deities, according to uh, uh, Twitchell, who, who start at the bottom rung of the spiritual ladder and end up with the Sugmad, the god, Frekankar, the greatest of all. And then the ninth circle, he becomes the initiative. He goes on the vanguard of the race and sacrifices whatever is necessary for other Ekis. That's where you're at. And the tenth one, 
engenders a true wisdom, not of the lower worlds, but beyond human capacity. And the 11th is entrance into God consciousness. You're past eight, you're into nine, going toward 10 and 11? I've gone to the 11th, but not in this physical body or experience. That took place in the soul. That's as high as one can ultimately reach while here on earth. So but you're faced with the decision right now of what? To get the message out for those who have ears to hear only. In other words, you haven't chosen to go on. You've chosen to stay to That's teach correct. others. Is That's that correct? correct. Okay. Um, this path, I find, is very uh, interesting in that it uh, parallels many of the other groups. And Tal, when I was reading uh, your life story, uh, I couldn't help but think, goodness sakes, why are the parallels all there? What are the ones that stand out in your mind? The parallels? Well, there's a whole... Um thing of evolving to higher levels of consciousness, there's the whole matter of having spirit entities or guides or uh, cr different creatures you get in contact in Hinduism, God sometimes. Um, Each level of heaven has yeah. a deity. So, well, another spirit a guide or another deity a picks you up and helps you? I mean, the Mormons even say that. Yeah. Um, there's the idea of the divinization of the self. It's the whole idea of the droplets re-emerging with the, the primordial ocean or the, the bits of mercury melding together. Standard pantheism is what it is. I, I want to ask Darwin right there, because yeah. you just brought up something about these little droplets. Sure. Twitchell, after we got through that list, I came up against a quote, and maybe you're familiar with this one, at the spot that you're at, you're not home free yet, apparently. He says this. I'm still here. Yeah, I know. He says this, that uh, Ekankar teaches the soul usually begins life on earth as a mineral. And here's your wheel of, uh, of karma. It's called wheel of 84. Okay. Progresses upward through plant, amphibian, reptile. Then you get to a mammal, human forms involving 8,400,000 incarnations, which is called the wheel of 84. But when you get up to where you're at, if you don't choose God consciousness, or if you flunk out and somehow here. You, he says, you blow the chance for God consciousness while in human form, you may st start over again as a common chunk of granite. Mm -hmm. And then the play goes back through another yeah. 8,400,000. I mean, have you thought about that? Oh, I've, reached, I've experienced a God conscious state. Mm. Uh, the choice was mine. It was lonely and it was difficult. I don't know why anyone in this God-given earth would want to become a master after I've reached it. Well, you don't have a no, choice, though. Wait a minute. I had a choice. I could have said no when I was confronted by the nine silent ones and when Paul Twitchell confronted me with... The Ascended Masters. The Masters, the Vairagi Masters. I could have said no, they, but they, I chose to say yes. You had a council with them in yes. the spirit world? In soul. In soul, okay. The and I was conscious, plane. physically consciously aware of it, of the experience. What was their advice? Their advice, there was no advice. I was asked if I want the responsibility. And one must ultimately, within themselves, man or woman, as one unfolds spiritually, I don't care what path it's on in the lower worlds, as one is praying, meditating, or whatever spiritual exercise one does, ultimately has to become responsible for their actions, their thoughts, their words and deeds. And I don't perform miracles as uh, Barbara did and some others out there in the world. Uh, I don't rely on anyone but myself and God itself. Let me ask you this. I asked this to tell sure. uh, uh, off camera at a break uh, before we got here. And I'd like to ask you the same thing. And then I'll come back to you, Tal. And that is, is there anything right now in the progression and the stages that you're at that would be able to come in to persuade you of a completely different worldview. Namely, that the God of the Bible is not a pantheistic God, but he's the transcendent God over the creation. And man was made in his image and is responsible to him, and that his son Jesus gave us the evidence in real history that he should be listened to. And the fact is that, is there anything like that that would come into your mind that would be a, 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 a red light or a flashing signal that would say, wait a minute, you have chosen the wrong path, there's still time, or is there nothing now that would persuade you otherwise? 